All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the way to derive the formula to find the gradient in the cylindrical coordinates. So before getting on with the derivation, let me give you guys some basic concepts on cylindrical coordinates. Uh, basically, cylindrical coordinates has uh, three space variables, r, theta, and z, where r is the radial distance from the g-axis and theta is the azimuthal angle and g is same as in the Cartesian coordinate system. Now, the relation between the Cartesian and cylindrical space variables is represented by these three equalities over here. X is equals to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, and g equals to z. Uh, so, to derive the formula, we will need to find the relation between the partial derivatives in the Cartesian coordinate system and in the cylindrical coordinate system. So, for that, here I have a matrix form of the chain rule. The chain rule is defined as something like this. Here I have uh, used the chain rule to find the partial derivative of phi with respect to r. So by using this expression over here, I can find the partial derivative of phi with respect to r. Here phi is a scalar field for which all the partial derivatives must exist. Similarly, after finding the partial derivative of phi with respect to theta and g, uh, I have constructed the matrix form of the chain rule. Here in this matrix, I have to find the partial derivative of x, y, and g with respect to r, theta, and g. And by using these equalities, I have found the respective partial derivatives, and by substituting uh, these values, I have obtained the matrix over here. As you can see, this matrix uh, is a matrix equation. This over here is a matrix equation. Uh, which is b is equal to ax and by multiplying uh, the first row of this matrix with this vector and by multiplying the second row of this matrix with this vector i have obtained two equations over here i will be using these two equations later on to find the solution now here we have a relation between the unit vectors of the cylindrical and the cartesian coordinate system here r, theta, and g with the hat are the unit vectors in the cylindrical coordinate systems and x, y, and g with the hat are the unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate system and these two expressions over here are the relation between the unit vectors of the cylindrical and unit vectors of the Cartesian coordinate system. Now let's begin the derivation. Uh, in Cartesian coordinate system, the gradient of a scalar field is defined as the vector of partial derivatives with respect to its space coordinates. So basically, the gradient of a scalar field is a vector field. And in cylindrical coordinates, uh, since it's a gradient, it is always going to have terms with the partial derivatives with respect to its space variables. And obviously, it is, uh, it is going to have the unit vectors. So the, gradient is, uh, so the gradient in a cylindrical coordinates is going to be of this form. And here only the coefficients a, b, and c are going to be different from the Cartesian coordinate system. And we're supposed to find these coordinates a, b, and c. Since we have calculated the gradient of the same scalar field, the value of the gradient is going to be the same for the cylindrical coordinate system and for the Cartesian coordinate system. And from this very fact, uh, we can derive this expression over here. Now we can single out the components of the left hand side by taking the dot products with the cylindrical unit vectors. But before that, let me point out uh, some properties of the unit vector. So if uh, two unit vectors are perpendicular to each other, that is if the angle between them is 90 degree, the dot product between them is going to be zero. And if the angle between them is zero degree, the dot product between them is going to be equal to one. In a cylindrical coordinate system, the r, theta, and g unit vectors, they are perpendicular to each other. Uh, so the dot product between them is always going to be zero. And similarly, the x, y, and g unit vectors are perpendicular unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate system. So the dot product between them is always going to be zero. Uh, now let's multiply uh, this expression over here by the r unit vector. So if uh, so if we take the dot product of something with itself, the answer is always going to be 1 because the theta will be 0. So we will be left out with only this term over here. And uh, since r unit vector, theta unit vector, and g unit vector, they are perpendicular to each other, this term, this term, and this term, they are going to be 0. So we'll end up with this expression over here. Now, what is going to be the dot product between x unit vector and r unit vector? 
and uh, y unit vector and i unit vector. So for that, we have to see the relation between the unit vectors in the Cartesian and cylindrical coordinate system. So we had these two expressions over here before. Now, if I take the dot product uh, with dot product of this x unit vector uh, time uh, and r unit vector, I will only have cos theta because r unit vector uh, r unit vector taking the dot product with itself is going to be one. So I'll only have cos theta, and since uh, theta unit vector. Uh, and r and vector are perpendicular to each other, their dot product is going to be zero. So this term will disappear, so we'll only have cos theta. Similarly, if we multiply, uh, so similarly, if we take dot product of uh, y unit vector with r unit vector, the result is only going to be this sine theta, because r unit vector with uh, taking its dot product with itself is, is going to result in one, and uh, since uh, theta unit vector and r unit vector are perpendicular, the result is going to be zero. So this term will disappear, and we'll only have sine theta. So here we can say that uh, a times the partial derivative of phi with respect to r is going to be equal to this expression of over here. And uh, by doing similar operations, uh, we, will, we will have this expression of over here. It says that b times the partial derivative of phi with respect to theta, uh, with respect to theta is going to be equal to this expression over here. I obtained this expression by multiplying this expression over here. Uh, by multiplying this expression over here by theta theta unit vector since uh, theta unit vector r unit vector and z unit vector are perpendicular this term this term uh, and this term are going to disappear so i will only have uh, this term this term and this term and from the relationship between the unit vectors by doing similar similar operations uh, i can say that this term is going to be equal to minus sine theta and this dot product is going to be equal to cos theta and if i multiply this expression with uh, g unit vector this term this term this term and this term are going to be equal to zero because these unit vectors are perpendicular to each, each other and g unit vector times g unit vector is going to be equal to one it is going to be the same over here so i will only have c times partial derivatives of pi of uh, phi with uh, g is going to be equal to this term this term and this term can cancel so we can say that c is going to be equal to one now the two equations that we have derived earlier are going to be handy over here here we said that the partial derivative of phi with respect to r is uh, going to be equal to this expression and now we can substitute this expression with this term over here and uh, and by doing so, we can obtain this equation over here. And now I can cancel this term with this term, and I will get A equals to 1. And by substituting this equation B with uh, partial derivative of phi with respect to theta, I will obtain this equation over here. I can take the R common from here, and I can cancel these two terms, and I will obtain B is equals to 1 by R. Now, if I substitute back these these uh, values of a, b, and c in this uh, in this gradient uh, expression, I will obtain this expression at the end, which is the required result.